Let's bring in my next guest. Joining me now is political journalist John Fun. John, thanks so much for joining us here on The U.S. Report. First of all, I've got to get your thoughts on those House committee hearings. We played a bit earlier in the program. What did you make of the testimony that the whistleblowers offered, as well as this FBI form that Chuck Grassley has just dropped? Well, I share with Bacho, your previous guest, I'm torn between whether I'm more surprised at what the testimony revealed about the politicization of the Justice Department, or more surprised that the media has decided this is not a story worth covering. And um, we'll find out which is, which is ultimately gonna be the most important. But the real issue here is this. You know, the American people have a right to say, well, all of Washington is sordid, all of Washington is sleazy. This is just another example of administration being shown in that blight. However, going forward, this president is running for re-election. This president has a decent chance of being re-elected. Uh, we are looking at a situation that they can't be bottled up forever. So whether it's this year, next year, or 2025, the Biden family story is going to come tumbling out. And that will leave, a, at best, a weakened president, and perhaps a president who will have to be impeached, or perhaps a president who may have to uh, submit himself to uh, all kinds of questions and actually be forced to answer them. Now, the other problem is this. Joe Biden, if the story is true, that he was clearly lying about his associates, knowing about his asso the associations of Hunter Biden with all kinds of sketchy people and taking in money with the understanding that it was for family access and for access to the president or the vice president, as Biden was, that means biden was subjecting himself to blackmail you cannot do that that imperils the national security of the country uh we saw how far richard nixon went to avoid uh, stories about watergate from coming out we saw how far bill clinton went denying even the fact that he knew more than nodded at monica Lewinsky. a president can't subject himself to blackmail and in this case biden was jeopardizing the country if these charges are true well, so, you know, you say that the story is going to come tumbling out into eventually it's going to have to make the mainstream media. But the question is, the Democrat Party, they've got to be looking at this and thinking, well, do we go with him? Do we put him up against what's presumably going to be Trump at this point and hope that, you know, Trump doesn't get any more states than he did last time around? Biden slides in. But the problem there is people will be looking at both the scandals and Joe Biden's age and his, you know, shall we say, cognitive issues uh, and energy issues and thinking, well, a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for Kamala Harris. What is your prediction about the chance that Joe Biden is not the guy the Democrats put on the ticket next November? You have framed the issue perfectly. If I were a Democratic donor or leader, I would say the following. What is our major goal? It is to stay in power. Whatever happens, you have to stay in power. Now, there are about 15, 16 months till the election of 2024. Uh, how do we stay in power? Do we take a risk on a president who's clearly failing in his mental faculties, failing physically, and is not telling us the truth? Remember, Biden didn't just tell the American people, I knew nothing about Hunter Biden's business activities. I have nothing to do with this. He told his fellow Democrats that. So if he'll lie to his fellow Democrats, what else is he lying about? Would you take a risk as a party leader that your elected president uh, doesn't have a major disaster, either in terms of his mental faculties, his physical condition, or these scandals in the next 16 or 17 months? And if you don't act, if you do roll your dice and go with Joe Biden, and something happens to him, you end up with Kamala Harris. Do you think Kamala Harris has a chance to be president? Probably much less than Joe Biden, given her approval ratings and given her disastrous performance as vice president. If you're a Democrat, frankly, as difficult as it may be to pull off, you have to dump Joe Biden from the ticket because you can't take the risk.
But then how would the mechanics of something like that work? You know, we have a parliamentary system in Australia where these things are a lot easier to manage. The party room says, you know, you're gone, but you don't have that in the United States. Would he have to be convinced by party elders? Would there have to be talk of invoking the 26th Amendment, uh, saying that he's infirm and unable to discharge his duties, like there was talk around Trump with that? Would he be have to say, I'm opening up the primary process to allow a Gavin Newsom or somebody else to come in rather than have it presumptively go to Kamala Harris. Again, you framed the issue well. It's a problem how to do this. But think about this. Family members who perhaps know that Joe Biden is in more peril than he is may intervene. Uh, Jill Biden has been taking care of Joe for a long time, protecting his interests, uh, guarding him from the public, guarding him from the media. Um, if she realizes that the future involves not a second Biden term, but perhaps a humiliated legacy as president, uh, should he continue, uh, then she may step in. In addition, party elders may quietly start backing off from Biden on Hunter Biden's investigations. They may decide, well, we better let this run, run out a little bit. We'll have to watch future hearings. For example, when Joe Biden, uh, business, when Hunter Biden's business partner appears before the House committee next week, uh, right now, the Democratic Party has decided to stick with Biden. There's no doubt about that. But with more revelations, and all it may take is one more fall to remind the public of Joe Biden's failing faculties, um, you could have the party break quickly and decide we have to send a delegation to Biden saying the future looks very bleak if you continue to remain as president and you cannot count as on the United, United support and defense of your party. Finally, John, I want to ask you about the Republican side of the ledger. Uh, Donald Trump is running away with it in all of the polls for the primary, yet he's got this possible third indictment hanging over his head. Um, how do you think this plays out? Because if Biden has all of these problems going into the general election, Donald Trump may be very popular with his fans and the Republican Party base. But does that also create a huge problem for the Republicans in trying to get a majority of voters or a majority of states, at least, um, you know, in 2024 as well? Well, Trump's lead is very strong and has been consistent. However, the vast majority of voters are not truly focusing on this race because they've, the race hasn't come to their state yet. Iowa and New Hampshire don't vote until January of next year. The question will be this. After the holidays, and the candidates have gone through Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina and Nevada. Uh, what do the polls show? Do the polls show that if Biden is still the presumptive Democratic nominee, do they show that Trump is perhaps the only Republican who could lose to Biden? Will the other Republican candidates fare better against Biden in the polls? We don't know that yet. We also don't know if a lot of voters say, well, three indictments, they may be unfair, they may be awful, but um, will independent voters be able to look, overlook all of that and vote for Trump? Or is the political baggage that those represent, the albatross around Donald Trump's neck, simply too heavy? So Donald Trump is the re favorite for the Republican nomination. But there's over half of Republicans say it's most important to win in 2024 because they don't believe the country can take a liberal Democrat in the White House, whether it's Biden or someone else. If they believe Trump is less electable and other Republicans are more electable, they are perfectly capable of turning that political calculation around very quickly. If you don't believe me, I remind you in 2008, Rudy Giuliani was the clear favorite for the Republican nomination, way ahead of everyone else. He ended up not being the nominee. It was John mm. McCain who had been written. And remember in 2008, Hillary Clinton was by far <laughs> ahead of Barack Obama. She was the presumptive nominee, but Barack Obama surprised everyone and became the next president of the United States. John Fund, that's a great bit of history and a great reminder to everybody who's watching this horse race. We've got a long way to go, and we'll be bringing it to you right here on the U.S. Report. John Fund, thank you so much for your time.